Hi there, I'm Allison Isaac Sonitz and I'm the collections manager for botany at the Natural History Museum of Utah. And we're gonna be looking at some wild flowers that are commonly in bloom right now. Right now it's the first week of May, so everything that I'm gonna be showing you is um, just starting to pop and it should be in bloom through the entire month of May into June. So I picked out a handful of plants that are common all along the Wasatch in the foothills. So when you're out hiking, biking, enjoying the outside with your family, you should be able to find these plants. The first plant we're gonna look at here is arrow leaf balsam root and that's Balsamariza sagittata. That's the Latin name. And this plant is really common throughout the Western United States, and it really likes these rocky, dry, open, sunny slopes. So it has these really characteristic, bright, yellow, sunflower-looking flowers. But unlike sunflower, it grows close to the ground, and it has these really large, heart-shaped leaves. We call that chordate. And the color is gonna be this light green-gray, and that's because there's this kind of fuzzy texture on the leaf. And if you feel it, it's a little bit leathery, but also kind of sticky at the same time, so it kind of feels a little bit like skin almost. So this is a typical aster family flower. This is in the family Asteraceae. The outside, we have these ray flowers, and the inside is gonna be all these little disc flowers. So it looks like one big flower, but it's actually a ton of little tiny flowers, and each one is gonna go to make its own seed. The next plant I wanna talk about is Utah milk vetch, and that is Astragalus utahensis. And this plant is cool because this is a, a very local plant. It is predominantly just found here in the Wasatch Range. The Utah milk vetch can be identified by its very characteristic pea family looking flower that's bright pink, this really gorgeous pink. And then it has these, what we call pinnately compound leaves. So the leaf has all these tiny, tiny little leaflets just coming off of it. And they're gonna be really, really fuzzy. Many milk vetches have pretty toxic alkaloid compounds in them that will make you very sick or kill you if you eat them. So please don't go around trying to eat any of these. In fact, if you know the story of Christopher McCandless, milk vetches are a close relative of the plant that he ate. All right, this next plant we're gonna talk about is called ballhead water leaf. And the Latin name for that is Hydrophyllum capitatum. And this is another one that's really common throughout the Western United States. And it's really common in these dry, slopey, wooded areas. It really likes to be in the shade of shrubs and trees. Some identifying characteristics of ball head water leaf, you have these deeply lobed leaves that are very, very soft. It almost have like a flannelly texture. The flower heads are like these perfect spears of lots of little flowers and they're lavender in color. And in this particular species, the flowers are, are gonna sit kind of low to the ground underneath where the leaves are. While these plants are technically edible, they are pretty bitter, so they're gonna be more of a survival food. The next plant here, this is sagebrush bluebells. Bertensia oblongifolia. And this plant is really another one really common in the entire Western United States. To identify them, you have these very characteristic, beautiful blue flowers that literally hang down like bells and they're gonna be kind of tube shaped. Sagebrush bluebells is a quite tasty edible and you can just pluck a leaf off and eat it raw. It tastes very lettuce-y. It has almost like a mild like oystery seafood flavor. The next plant here is longleaf phlox, phlox longifolia, and it has these very fuzzy little strap-shaped leaves, and it has these gorgeous bright pink five-petaled flowers. Typically five-petaled, but it's not uncommon to actually see four six or seven petaled ones. A tea of longleaf phlox can be used to treat stomach ailments. You can find longleaf phlox in sunny open meadows and dry rocky hillsides. This next one is one of our more iconic spring flowers and this one is called fernleaf lomatium, otherwise known as fernleaf biscuit root. And this plant is commonly found all throughout the Western United States in kind of dry sloping wooded areas 
but I've also seen it a lot down in the city, like in parks and along rivers. It grows everywhere, it's very common, so you're very likely to see it. Fernleaf Limatium is in the carrot family. One of the defining features of this family are these inflorescences, so these groups of flowers that are in a shape called an umbel, and you can kind of think of it as an umbrella. Um, and this is gonna get these gorgeous yellow flowers on it. And then the leaves are very like parsley or carrot-like if you've ever seen one of those plants. Because this plant is in the carrot family, you wanna be really careful making sure that you have the exact correct ID because some of the most poisonous plants in the United States share this family, like poison hemlock and water hemlock. So just make sure that you know that you have the right plant. These are just a few of the many, many, many spectacular plants that you'll find in bloom around this time along the Wasatch. Be sure you get out into nature the next few weeks, and before you do, download iNaturalist on your phone and use it to record your observations of these plants and meet other new plants. Thank you so much for joining me on this plant walk. Happy botanizing!